Well, speaking of uh, guitars that people can afford, we were going to talk about that a little bit. I know that that Bart is has even gone out with people that are interested in becoming a member, but don't have any equipment, guitars. They they've told Bart what their budget is, and Bart's actually gone with them to guitar stores like Guitar Center or something and shopped with them and helped them pick out the best guitar for their budget. So yeah, I've it's actually, pretty nice. I've actually helped, uh, let me explain that my day job, I travel a lot. So it's given me the opportunity to, uh, like in an evening for instance, if I've got a free evening and I'm in another part of the country, I go to guitar stores, that's what I do. Could be mom and pop stores, it could be Guitar Center, it could be Sam Ash, whatever, they can go anywhere. And um, because I'm so interested in, in guitars and helping people, uh, sometimes their staff isn't, uh, they don't have enough staff to take care of people, I guess. Might be a best politically correct way to say it. So I start asking questions. I mean, if they look like they're confused, and uh, I've sold hundreds of guitars for guitar stores, not trying to sell the product necessarily, but trying to help the customer. And uh, so, so there's a lot of things that you have to look at. And I'll grab a guitar and we'll... Yeah. Uh, show us a couple of guitars that people, or that are affordable for people. Yeah, so... So when you're looking at a guitar, or you're looking to get your first guitar, let's say, again, it depends on if you're an adult or if you're a 12-year-old, 10-year-old boy or girl or whatever the case may be, you gotta get something that fits you. But besides the fit, and when I talk about fit, I'm not just talking about the body size, I'm talking about the neck size as well, the scale of the guitar, the size of the guitar, but you also, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they go buy a guitar is they buy something that's too hard to play. And when I say too hard to play, most of the time that means the action is too high. So the distance between the string and the fretboard, that's the action, okay, the height of the strings. And if you're trying to play a guitar and, and it's not set up correctly, the strings are too high, you're gonna get so frustrated because your hands are gonna hurt. After five minutes of playing, you're gonna give it up before you even have a fair chance of learning how to play. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to take all of those things into account. And you've really gotta understand also the type of music that people want to play. Whether it's uh, with a nylon string because they wanna play uh, Spanish music, or uh, even nylon string guitars are really good for even folk music. and country music and, uh, you know, Jason Mraz plays nylon string guitars a lot. So you can use them very versatile and, and really easy on your fingers because they push down so easily. The other thing that you really want to make sure and get a good handle on when you're buying a guitar are the tuners. You want to tune it in the store and move the tuners back and forth and back and forth and make sure that they're not loose. Make sure that there's a nice resistance on the strings because another thing that is very frustrating besides the height and, and how hard it is to press down on the strings is if you can't keep your guitar in tune and every song you have to retune it, it's, it's so frustrating. So you need to buy a guitar that's gonna stay in tune, that's gonna be easy to play, and it's gonna keep you motivated to keep playing the guitar. Right. So. The first one I have here is that I'm going to talk about is a Taylor GS Mini. This one happens to be Koa. This is actually the second one that I own. Um, the first one that I bought was a mahogany, and I liked it so well, and it actually belongs to my son now, uh, but I liked it so well that I bought a Koa. Now, in my humble opinion, <laughs> any guitar player, any and every guitar player, ought to have one of these, no matter if you're a beginner or a seasoned veteran pro, because they travel so well. They stay in tune, they're fun to play, they're easy to play, the scale length is very friendly, comes with a really nice gig bag. You can travel very easily on a plane. 
You can carry these on a plane with you in the gig bag, set them up into the overhead. No airline is going to stop you from doing that, unless you're the last one on the plane and there's just not room. But uh, that's up for, to you to, to work out those details. But these little GS Minis are really lightning in a box as far as I'm concerned. Now they come with electronics, like mine has the ES2 expression system in it, but they also come without electronics. So without electronics, you can pretty much get into one of these for less than $500. And it's gonna be a guitar that will last for a long, long time, stay in tune, fun to play, easy to play, and they look really nice too. So besides, I'm gonna talk about another guitar that I don't, have with me today. I don't have one here, but it's another Taylor. I am a fan of Taylors, but I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to push any brand on anyone. Uh, the main thing is to get something that you're going to enjoy playing that's easy to play. But the Academy Series Taylor guitar uh, came out with last year. Pretty new to them, but they made the decision that they really wanted to, to create a guitar that was for the brand new player. So, without electronics, a full-size guitar, you can get it in a Dreadnought, which is a 10, or you can get a 12, which is a grand concert size. You can get it without electronics for less than $500. With electronics, about $649. But that guitar, everything about it is made to make it easy to start playing guitar and learn guitar. It has an armrest built into it. By armrest, I mean, instead of a sharp edge here, it, it, it live, it's tapered. And so whenever you're playing and your arm rests over the bow of the guitar, you got a nice slope, doesn't make any creases on your arm. That's wonderful. The neck profile on the Academy Series is fantastic. Everything about that guitar is, is made for the beginner to make it Easy to play, no frills, just a good quality guitar that's going to last a really long time. So those are the two tailors that I wanted to talk about today. I'll grab another guitar. So and the, the problem with, you know, if you don't look into things like this, I've seen so many people that buy guitars that have like ropes on them for strings and the action is an inch <laughs> off of it. And they just give it up within a month or so and those guitars just languish their way in the attic or something. Um, and they think that, they, that they'll never be able to play a guitar. Well, they'll never be able to play that one. Well, you know? unfortunately, they set themselves up to fail. Right, Eric stuff. Clapton couldn't play that guitar, you know? <laughs> so they need something that's very playable. Yeah. And again, when you go to a guitar store in your local uh, neighborhood, you just got to be the one that drives the conversation because unfortunately, sometimes you'll know more than the individual that's there to try to help you buy a guitar. So just keep in mind that you want to find something easy to play that fits you very well. And, uh, and you can do that for not very much money. Now, you can also spend a lot of money and, uh, and we'll get into that probably not on today's <laughs> broadcast, but, uh, but, you know, the, the more you spend, you can get some really nice guitars. But I like to think that, you know, if you can at least have a budget of three or four, maybe $500, you're gonna be able to get a really nice guitar. It's gonna last you a really nice time, a uh, long time, and it's gonna play great for a long time. And um, you might have to do a little setup on it. You might have to do a little adjustment to the neck, but again, a luthier can help with all that. This guitar that I'm gonna show you now is a, is a Yamaha. And it's actually a, what they call a red label Yamaha. It's mahogany on the back and sides, really nice neck profile. Stays in tune, it's got electronics on it. Yamaha is a fantastic brand for starters to get into. Uh, and also for people that want to get a very good affordable guitar that's gonna last a long time. And I'm going to let Dana grab that Yamaha over there, and uh, let's talk about that one for just a minute. Okay, this is a this is a much less expensive model. It's an older one too. This is used. This is like a 1999 Yamaha. Um, this model happens to be a FG 401, 
and it, it's probably not solid wood back and front. I think I think it probably has a spruce top. Yeah. Um, but these these are available or similar models for you know probably three hundred dollars or so, three hundred fifty dollars. I had a Yamaha a long, long time ago, a red label one, that you could compare to a Martin in, in its day. It was a Japanese made one. Um, but Yamaha just makes a, a whole bunch of different levels of guitars from very beginning, which yeah. is what this would be. But this would be very good for a beginner player. Um, and I, like I said, you could probably find something like this for three to four hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, if you knew a little bit about what you're doing, there's a lot of bargains that you can find in the used market. You know, but sometimes a brand new person shouldn't be out there in the used market because you don't know what you're getting. You know, if you have a little bit, if this may be your second or third guitar or you used to play guitar and you're getting back into it, yeah. then you can maybe get out on the used market and find some really yeah, good bargains. You know, the local Craigslist and, and uh, the one, sale ads, you can find some really good bargains out there. Right. Um, I would recommend that if it's your first guitar, you're buying it for your son or daughter or something like that. If you go that route, you might be able to save a little bit of money, but it might cause you a lot of headaches. Unless you have a friend or some, you know, somebody, somebody like myself that says, okay, I'll help you. Right. Somebody <laughs> because, knows what you're doing. Yeah. So, you know, there's some of the brand names are kind of important. And, yeah. and, Taylor is definitely one of the brand names that, yep. you, that are good, and they have the beginning uh, entry level guitars. Right. Exactly. Martin has entry level guitars now that are yep. pretty good and really reasonable. Yep. They're, they're made in Mexico, the the entry level ones, but they're they're solidly made and they've got deep sound in them. Yep. Yamaha is another brand. I'd like to mention Breedlove as well. Breedlove right. has uh, some really nice. Breedlove is based out of Bend, Oregon, and they're more expensive guitars called the Oregon Series, and then they have Mastercraft and Masterclass Series. They're made in Bend, Oregon, but they're less expensive uh, guitars, might be made overseas, but you can get them with, with electronics, with a tuner already built into them for four or $500, and they're really nice guitars. Here, here's another sleeper guitar. This is yeah. called a Seagull. So I don't know if you can see this. It's got a unique head. Most all the seagulls have that right. type of head on them. This is a fabulous guitar that fell through the cracks that people don't talk about that much. This is solid wood. This is solid spruce. This is cherry in the back. It has a brand name uh, electronics. These are made in Canada. And these are made up in, uh, in Quebec, Canada. The whole town. I believe there's a little town up there. The whole town is involved with making these guitars. And these are fabulous guitars. And you can buy these from four to $650 in that range. And you can find them used yeah. uh, at a reasonable price. And these have a low action when you get them. The electronics is really good. Um, they're just quality. They got a rich sound. This is this is electric and acoustic, but right now it's just not plugged in. But they're really rich sounding, and these are sleeper guitars, and they travel well. Usually, um, they come with uh, a lot of times a cedar top. Right. But they also, if you look at the back of this guitar, you'll notice it's a satin finish. Right. The interesting thing about a satin finish is. Uh, that it doesn't leave fingerprints nearly as much as a gloss finish. So, right. you know, if you have trouble keeping a guitar clean or you don't want the fingerprints, sometimes you can get satin all over the whole right. thing and then it doesn't show arm sweat and fingerprints mm -hmm. quite as much. But, but this is a fabulous fantastic. guitar that not a lot of people have talked about, Seagull. Yeah. And uh, there's, a, there's a whole uh, genre of people that, that buy these guitars. They just love them. Yep. They got a lot of different models. They got parlor size. This is the uh, this is the S6 model with the electronics in it, and it, I love it. And I, I bought it used, and it's like they gave it away. Yeah, you know, but it's fabulous. Well, one of the things, let me see it just a second before you put it away. One of the things I haven't mentioned yet, folks, is that if you look at the base of the deck, usually inside, there's a truss rod that goes underneath the, the fretboard on the neck. So if there's any problem with the, the pitch of the neck, because over time it's pulled, there's a lot of tension 
on a six and especially a 12 string guitar, once you tighten the strings to pitch, that's a lot of tension pulling on that neck. So a truss rod will allow you to, to make up, to adjust that tension. And mm -hmm. that way, when you're looking down the, the profile of the neck, a luthier can tell you if it's if the action needs to be adjusted and they can do it. If it's if it's if you're new to guitar, don't adjust the truss rod until after you've been shown how to do it a couple of times. Right. The other thing, just real briefly for newbies, um, there's different gauges of strings, and uh, you know I I still use the lightest acoustic strings pretty much that you can buy. Now you lose a little of the tone. A little volume. Yeah, a little volume, and, and they're not so deep. They might be a little tinnier, yeah. but they're a lot easier on your fingers. Yeah. I have tens on here. Bart probably plays twelves or more. Twelves. You know, so you got tens, eleven, twelves. You can go higher than that if you can if you can grip them. But uh, so that's another thing for a new person to think about is the string gauge yeah. that they use. And just so you know, like electric guitar players, uh, they typically use tens or elevens, and uh, they're slinkier. The strings will stretch more. So if you're doing bends and vibratos uh, with an electric guitar. Those tens and eleven strings really allow you to bend farther up to pitch. You can go two or three frets at a time on a bend. And speaking, speaking of electric guitars, <laughs> when in the uh, in the um, guitar league meetings, because we have them in a hotel, we're kind of required to bring acoustic guitars because if you have fifty people in a room with amplifiers and electric guitars all plugged in, you you know, blow the walls out of the hotel. So they asked that we do things acoustically. So we do. Yeah. However, if you only have an electric guitar, there's a great little gadget here. This is called a strum buddy. So this is the strum buddy. It comes with a, it's got a suction cup on it. Now I want you to hear, so an electric guitar doesn't have a lot of volume. So if you, if all you have is an electric guitar, but you want to come to Guitar League, we want you to be there. We just can't plug you into all the amplifiers like Dana mentioned. So what we do, I always carry one of these with me. So if someone shows up the first time and doesn't know any better, well, we can hook them up. But we put this suction cup on the guitar, plug it in, and then we have Now we have an electric guitar that's no louder than an acoustic guitar. And these actually, if you just have one to practice with at home with your electric guitar, you can even, you can get into some crunch and You know, it's not a Fender Twin, no. but it gets the job done, you know, so that you can hear yourself, you know, and the neighbors aren't complaining. So, yeah, it allows people to bring an electric guitar and play that until such time that they buy an acoustic or keep We're coming not. with an electric and right. bring We have people come with electric guitars yep. and using that, yep. and they're happy. Yeah, and it's fun, and they're a part of the group that way. And uh, I mean, I've actually, with our members, I've even loaned people acoustic guitars because they came and didn't have a guitar. And I'll loan them for a month nice. or two. You're just <laughs> too nice. You gotta stop that stuff. I, I just want people to have fun. So anyway, so, um, electric guitars are welcome. We just have to uh, modify them slightly. Right. So that's basically a good idea about what guitars they can buy, what brands yeah. they can look for, and the Absolutely. price ranges.